Uh, so I thought it'd be fun to actually show React Native running on the Apple TV rather than talk about it. So that's what I'm gonna do. And hopefully this won't be like a sales demo where things crash, <laughs> uh, but it will, be actually, it will actually all work. So React Native is just like React.js except it's on native views instead of web views, which is great because Apple TV doesn't have any web views. It doesn't have a browser. Doing this work has actually made it possible for us to have all this wonderful JavaScript and wonderful tools and make them actually work on the Apple TV, which they really didn't prior to this work. So the Apple TV, basically you interact with it through a remote. You don't have a touch screen. And you'll notice that when you gesture with the remote, the remote has a, a touch pad on it. The um, icon that you're on that's focused actually moves up and down. It's got some animation to let you know, to give the eye some guidance as to where you are on the screen. So now I'll open up my app. And uh, I'm a software engineer at Salesforce. I've been there for about four years. Uh, before that, I was an iOS developer at SAP. And uh, so I came to this project from the point of view of an iOS native developer uh, rather than a JS developer. That will probably show as you see some of the slides. Um, but it'll give you a flavor of what we had to do, what I had to do to make React and React Native work on the Apple TV. And I'm going to also talk a little bit about um, not just Apple TV, but um, a little bit about Android TV because that's something that's actually coming. There's now a pull request to fully support that in React Native as well. And then talk uh, maybe one slide on some future ideas. I've done lots of weird things. I've been around a while. I've been to the South Pole. I play some music and I like TV. And there's me watching TV. <laughs> Everybody loves this one. Uh, but I also like to build apps using React. So we started this project. It was really hard, but this is some good advice for everyone who starts a hard project. Never despair, but if you do, work on in despair. So I'm a Salesforce developer. Uh, most of the time I work on either a Java app server or on a browser. So how did I get involved in React Native? Uh, well, in fact, React Native is actually a big thing at Salesforce, as is React.js. They're both used in uh, many of our products. In particular, we support React Native as one of the ways in which you can build your own Salesforce app if you're one of our customers using what we call our mobile SDK. You can build your app as a web app or as a fully native app just using native APIs or as React Native. And uh, we have some demos that we've shown, and we also are using this technology internally to build some features in the Salesforce app that we distribute to customers and field service apps. We got involved with this because a couple of years ago, we started a research project to invest to uh, investigate the possibility of building a Salesforce app for TV. And the Apple TV is nice because unlike some of the other TV platforms, it has its own app store. So you can build your own native apps for it. It's um, really easy to build apps for it, as it turns out. Um, it's great for content, this data display is great. A lot of people use it to build games. And because it shares so much code in common with iOS, this project was actually a lot easier than it would have been otherwise. The effort, for example, to port React Native to Windows has been a very large effort with multiple engineers that took years. I did this port in about, most of the work was done in about three to four months, one person, because 90% of the code didn't have to be changed at all. So it's just Xcode, Objective-C, Swift. Most of the foundation APIs are there. Most of the UIKit APIs are there. Uh, but first of all, you've got a big problem. There's no browser, there's no web views, there's no sliders, there's no switches. There's a lot of UI elements that are on the phone that don't exist on Apple TV. There's a few other sort of weird things. For example, if you're persisting data, there's no documents directory that you, that you would find on, the, on iOS. So when you uh, quit a tvOS application, all of the data that you've stored um, in the cache directory all goes away. Apple doesn't allow you to store any, any data persistently. So there's a few other things like that that you have to remember. And then of course, React Native was designed for phones. So React Native is designed for touch screens, but tvOS doesn't have a touch screen. What it has is what's called the focus engine. The focus engine is basically like tab or arrow key navigation on the desktop. So what you have to do is to basically detect when a UI element goes in and out of focus and respond to that correctly. We did manage to do that. This project was begun a couple years ago, about uh, June, July of 2016. About the end of that year, um, I got it merged to Facebook, React Native Master. Um, it actually functions about since about 0.43, although there's been uh, some issues with that, which I can discuss later if you're interested. Compilation is tested in CI. CI has been an issue with React Native uh, Master. For example, um, initially there was no CI, of course, for tvOS until I put that in, but Facebook internally doesn't run any CI for tvOS, so when they push their changes, sometimes they're not tested. And that leads to some interesting problems where we have to sort of rapidly fix bugs. 
But as of this moment, as of today, I just checked, you can do React Native init and you will get a working tvOS application. We do support uh, some third-party frameworks. For example, React Native SVG works, <laughs> React Native Video works. There's a few others that I've uh, added tvOS support for. Oh, and then there's support for the dev menu, so you can do all the cool things with Chrome debugging, Visual Studio Code debugging, things like that. And uh, the URLs at the bottom of the screen are the documentation that's officially on the Facebook uh, React Native site and a page that I created that has some links to demos and has some links to um, get search URLs so that you can find what the issues are and what current pull requests are that uh, involve tvOS. Now, how do we deal with this focus engine and the fact that we don't have a touchscreen? My goal in building it this way was to make it so that someone who wrote an iOS app and uses the touchable component would just see their app work without any changes. They would have a UI element that was focusable that you could click on. If you're interested, I can go into a lot of details about how the native code does that. But basically, um, if you're an, a React Native developer, there's a, a mix-in called Touchable that provides a lot of the methods for uh, touchable opacity, touchable highlight. And that actually is getting the events from the native layer and calling these helper methods, these lifecycle methods that tell you when an element is pressed or when an element comes into focus or is about to be pressed. Um, this is actually what touchable opacity looks like when you actually start playing around with the tvOS specific props. So this is default. You'll see it actually does, it does a little bit of the animation. You can disable the animation entirely. You can magnify views when they're focused. You can make it a, do lots of tilting, all sorts of things like that. So all of that is adjustable by the developer. Um, we also put in a uh, TV remote event handler so that you can specifically look for events coming from the remote control in your app and respond to them. And I'll just actually do, I'll just stop here and do a quick demo. So this is actually showing a component over to the left that's telling you which key on the remote control was pressed. This is actually the code that you, this is the code that you should put in your app Something like this is sort of a boilerplate code that you would put in your component if you wanted to respond to TV remote events. All right, UI tips. Okay, this is not a phone. It's a huge screen, so don't use 10 point font sizes. <laughs> you typically want to make your font sizes two or three times bigger to make them visible. If you're building, like for example, if you're building an app that's intended to work on both iOS and tvOS, we would want some styling pivots. We do provide a, um, a platform.istvOS property that you can use to know whether you're running on the TV or whether you're running on an iOS phone. We recommend a lot of the apps that you'll see in the App Store use top menu navigation. And for that, there's a, um, actually it's an iOS native component called Tab Bar iOS that I would recommend you use. We've, I've done a lot of work to try to make that work really smoothly with, that's, that's what you're seeing at the top of the screen here. There are some issues that arise because of the focus engine. For example, React Native for performance reasons actually removes subviews that aren't visible from the, view, from the view hierarchy in iOS. And that works great on the iPhone because it means that the iPhone isn't rendering any more than it needs to. Problem is that the code that decides when a view comes into focus doesn't work very well in those conditions. So you need to turn that off. There, the list views, including flat list, the standard list view and others um, have a property called remove clip subviews and you want to set that to false. And I'll show you why. So this is a grid layout with list views. You'll see that without doing that, the view basically doesn't respond very well. It starts scrolling wildly all over the place. Whereas if you go over here and do the same gestures, you get the sort of n nice smooth scrolling that you would expect. And there are a few Apple TV apps on the App Store. I'm not aware of all of them. I'm aware of like a few of them that this one has shipped. There's a couple more that I've been in contact with their developers because they basically sent me bugs, <laughs> but uh, uh, they are actually working on real tvOS apps using this technology. And you can try it yourself today. Just go on your, um, on your Mac OS laptop or desktop and do React Native init awesome TV app and change to, when you open your project in Xcode, you change to the top level tvOS target and you can just build it and run it in the iOS simulator and it will come up with a nice tvOS view for you and you can play around with this. Android TV is coming and they're actually gonna be using a lot of the same React Native components that we're using, touchable, the same touchable functionality is gonna be there. The TV event handler will be supported in Android. That pull request is a huge one and it's actively being worked on between the people who developed that and the React Native uh, maintenance people. See, video works in React Native on tvOS too. So this is the standard React Native tester app that ships with the React Native distribution, or the source distribution, and it's just showing this working on an Android TV. They posted this on YouTube, and so I just copied it here.
Future possibilities, there's a few other things that uh, don't, like for example, React Native Run iOS works on, a, on the iOS simulator, but this does not work on the tvOS simulator. I've been requested to add support for the focus guide so that you can actually give guidance to the focus engine as to which is the next view that you uh, focus when you move uh, the, touch, the touchpad left or right or up or down. In some cases, without that focus guide, that next view might be unreachable if it's too far up or down or left or right. I've been talking to the Expo developers about Expo support. That's actually a fairly hard problem, but I'm hoping to get that done sometime soon. Text input does in fact work as you'd expect. Um, you can actually, so for example, you can get a number pad, an email address, and you get various kinds of text input views. Those also work with a Bluetooth keyboard. I recommend highly, if you're really working with a real Apple TV, get yourself a Bluetooth keyboard. It will save you lots of time <laughs> typing in passwords. Data visualization. This is a great thing because it has a big screen. Uh, I'm using here a really nice ReactJS library that was developed by a company called Formidable Labs up in Seattle. And in addition to building a really nice ReactJS version of this, uh, they built a nice React Native version of it as well. And it works really nicely. It's very easy to use and set up. And this basically took me about 10 minutes to get working on the, on the TV. Thanks to Salesforce for sponsoring this work. And I've gotten um, a good relationship with the Facebook React Native team. They are awesome. They did a lot of work to help me merge this into the master repo. And of course, thank you to the organizers here. That's it. Any questions? Yeah. Developers have any problems doing animations with React Native on tvOS? It works the same. Works as the on exact iOS. same. Oh wow! For example, you notice there's there's um, some animation between these slides. That's the animation uh, component in React Native. I was wondering how this works with the async storage with React Native. Works uh, great. Native. Is works it like great, the same? except it's using the cache directory, not the documents directory, so it's going to go away. The nice thing about it is, though, that these things stay plugged in all the time, so typically apps stay up for a very long time. But you do have to be aware that if somebody unplugs the TV, it's going to go away. How do you so how do you come up with this idea exactly? I mean, it it sounds great, right? And like, did you did you have like, oh, I want to be able to do something specific, or were you just like, uh, no, we were we were looking on. we were, we had a specific use case in mind for a TV app for Salesforce, and we felt like this would um, scale better because most of the people at Salesforce know JS more than they know iOS native development. Um, it's same, sort of the same things that you're probably dealing with at any other company. You want to use the technology that scales the best, that makes developers the most productive. And so we had the idea to try this, so I had a look to just see what the scope would be, and it looked like something that a reasonable iOS native developer could, could, could deal with. So we made the decision to go ahead. So you're an iOS developer prior to doing this React Native stuff, right? Correct. What is your experience with both? Do you feel like there's drawbacks using React Native versus iOS, doing native iOS? Um, okay, so the React Native developer experience is way better okay. in general <laughs> than the iOS native developer experience, I have to say. Um, that being said, if you're really gonna use this technology, um, it's really good that somebody on your team has knowledge of native. At some point, you're going to have to build a bridge. At some point, you're going to have to really understand what all those native threads are doing. It's very common. I was discussing this actually um, a little bit earlier before the, before the talk started tonight with somebody here. Most people don't build React Native apps from scratch. You know, if you're working within the context of a um, any kind of a large company in particular, you're probably going to be adding React Native to an existing application. Uh, that's certain, we're, we're actually doing that at Salesforce uh, in some cases. So uh, in those kind of cases, somebody needs to know how to actually make React Native play well with the rest of the app, um, possibly building custom components to, to make that possible. So, but it is a great developer experience, way easier than, native, than pure native development. I agree. Hi, thanks for the talk, it was really cool. Um, as a Salesforce consulting partner, and uh, we're kind of working a little bit with the FLS team, I was just wondering how Salesforce uses uh, React Native uh, on site, whether you guys have component libraries or are you using the Salesforce mobile SDK for React Native internally? 
Um, the answer to your <laughs> second question is yes, we are using it internally. Um, so that way we don't have to worry about all that authentication. Um, it the, the, the Salesforce React Native mobile SDK components handle authentication. They handle um, the REST API that we, that we provide to customers. Um, and they also handle secure storage. Um, and they, there's also a synchronization library that some apps use. And we're using this um, in several places internally. Some of, but the problem is I can't talk too much about some of those products because some of them are still in flight. They're not, they're not actually released yet. Sure, thank you. Sure. Thank you.